You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past, maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I am Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. He's like taking off from the earth. <sighs> Pay attention to this symbol here. It almost looks like a tunnel going down into a chamber. Are they drawing about like stranger things? Is this like our reality and the upside down? Because we always see these portal symbols in different places. And sometimes there's even animals or people falling out like they're falling out of the sky. In the middle, there's my, my hand with my glove on. So this is where all the entity figures are on the wall. But where the energetic lines go and connect is now glowing kind of oddly. So there's that weird like diamond pattern. There you can see it in the rock right there. And there's these hot spots. And then as I come down right in the middle, here's a hot spot and I notice that it's all a different color. Watch our step, huh? Ooh. I tell you, these guys were brave back in the day. There's the petroglyphs right there, way up here on this cliff. All right, oh, let's go. So cool. And look, there's little pockets in the wall. Looks like a way up right here, if you were super brave. Okay, here we have it. Again, another depiction of this guy almost coming out of a line um, connected to his feet, like he's going somewhere. We saw that down on the uh, one of the lower panels down in the valley that was tipped over. But now this has got these bullseyes. It has this wavy line up here. A lot of these little worn dots and indents. And then looks like some symbols and carvings even here. Etchings along the edge of the rock right there. And then here's this dude. So cool. He looks like a normal villager. It doesn't... He might have earrings. He just has round head, normal clothes. Looks like he's going somewhere. And there's a spiral almost like this is like a direction of travel uh, indicator. Way up here on the edge of this cliff. And then as I look up, a lot of times you'll even see him up higher. But it doesn't appear to be that way here. That does look all chipped and worn out, like they used to put stuff in there too. I wonder. Whoa, that goes way in there. Holy smokes. That's probably why. That goes way back in there. That's like a tiny little entrance that opens up and looks like it's full of sand on the bottom. Wow. Makes me wonder now. Here we are with these. What if I came over here and just looked up into this one? Let's find out. Those go back in a lot farther than they seem from the outside, don't they? Some of these look like they go way in there. Makes you wonder if there's not bigger pocket caves that just look like they have a tiny entrance that you have to crawl through. All right, so here we are at this panel of interesting petroglyphs where it looks like it has the guy coming out of or traveling in and out through different spirals or portal glyphs. And then we have these interesting pockets that look like they've been stuffed full of things or have had their 
uh, hands reached in and out of them like crazy. So let's get the thermal out and see if we get any kind of interesting readings here. I have it on a different palette setting this time. It is a black hot setting. So now anything, so you can see the petroglyphs there white right behind me. Uh, and my hand that is the hot signature is actually dark. So now anything with a dark color is going to be the heat. So there you've got the, there you've got the entrances to the little pocket up in there. Down here, you've got these petroglyphs. It doesn't look like we have any kind of interesting thermal anomalies out of the usual. Let's change the palette and take a look. Now I'm on a different setting. I think this was called rain. So it gives different layers. I think it kind of a fusion or overlaps a few different ones. Can even see different hot spots down in the valley below. There you can see the petroglyphs clearly with our portal friend. You can see the temperature variation looks really interesting, but nothing out of the ordinary other than like this spot right here that also looks like it's been touched a lot, pounded in or something, it does appear like right next to these portal symbols and stuff, there is spots that are suddenly where you're supposed to like touch or rub your hands or place your hands or something that's surrounded by all of the drawings. Interesting. See that? We have the spirals and the portals right here. And look what, how this is, just stands out like that. And let me show you what this looks like, just like in the last spot. Like uh, people were touching it a lot. This warm spot or different temperature signal is right here where it's completely chipped off. And look, there's even like a little bit of white pigment on the inside, almost like touching and rubbing. I used to think those were all bullet holes, like people from across the canyon would shoot at the petroglyphs, and maybe that is, and it could be a misunderstanding, but it seems interesting, like some of these spots are just touched and rubbed a lot more than just the petroglyphs and the symbols around them itself. This is all part of the exploration to figure out the same kind of thing that like Brandon Fugel's doing up at Skinwalker Ranch with the drones and the LIDAR scanning, revealing never before seen petroglyphs there that speak to ancient people living there, even at Skinwalker Ranch in the same way, doing similar things. I wanna keep going, so let's try to move up the valley and see if we can find some more petroglyphs. It seems like now we're in the zone where it's just gonna be panel after panel after panel, and we're gonna to get to a spot where I haven't been before and where maybe those weird pyramid shaped mounds are off in the distance if we can even get there. I'm having to make a decision here. There's the petroglyphs on the panel up there. If I try to stay on this lower ridge or if I drop all the way off, I'm gonna to have to hike all the way back down and around because this is just like a cliff ledge, like a 20 foot drop. But check this out right here on the ground as I was hiking down, I noticed this petrified wood, totally like a T. It almost looks like a hammerhead right? I'll zoom out so you can see. See how it's forked like that goes up and then across. But what this is, is like, see, this was the main body of the plant and this is the tree limb coming off. So it would have been more like that. Like this would be growing up that way or vice versa, maybe that way growing up that way. But those are just the branches of the tree going up and you can see where it went up and branched off and it's petrified into that sandstone. Who knows how long ago, but kind of a cool find right there. And there's pieces of it, petrified wood in the rock all over the place, even fragments all over in the boulder right there. I've decided 
I'm gonna stay up on top of the cliff and risk it because I think if there's petroglyphs right there there's probably more if I stay up so gotta risk it if you want a biscuit <laughs> I am so glad I decided to stay up on the upper level because I just found it this is one of the most spectacular panels of petroglyphs that I've ever been to in my life. I've been to a lot of different places and there is more interesting stuff crammed into this one than almost any other place that I've been. It's this whole wall with a big boulder in front of an offset. It's so beautiful. It ties into even more petroglyphs than what we've already seen. And there's symbols on here that match uh, other locations that I've been. If you go back through and catch up and watch the last couple of years worth of my videos, uh, all of this stuff seems to fit together. It's really cool. I just have to figure out which way I'm gonna scramble up there. Cause look, there you can see them. I almost missed them. And there they are, oh, tucked up on this ridge. I was like, man, there's gotta be some up here. And it seems like there was, but sure enough. How in the hell did I get up here last time? I'm I don't wanna climb up this. If I fall, I'm gonna go clear down there. I'll figure it out. I gotta keep shimming along here. It looks like there's this tiny little staircase going up. Uh, we'll figure it out. This is one of my favorite panels of petroglyphs this entire canyon other than a few that are actually pictographs and some that I have no idea what they mean but I just want to give you guys a sense of the scale of this entire panel compared to my height so I'm like five foot eleven almost six feet tall and you're gonna get a sense of how big this is when you've got this a figure here standing here with horns and he's actually got a smaller figure right here almost like he's holding a person up on his hand so you've got a little person and then a whole large figure here with the head and the horns and this maybe this is a bird that he's carrying i don't know but there's also other symbols and glyphs here and notice how the coloration on the desert varnish on this uh, panel is different like this character here with the big triangular shaped body almost like he's wearing a big tunic and he has this headdress or horns on we're going to see again up here as well and the horns, either he's wearing like a big tunic or robe that makes it look that way. But see how it almost looks like he's got a little character or maybe a bird up on his arm or shoulders right here. Really interesting, fascinating. And you've got strange stuff like wood and limbs petrified in the sandstone like that, just sticking out. Um, kind of curious. But then as we go along here, you're gonna see it continue with different layers and different types of carvings. Here's a little figure. Looks like right here with three fingers, almost again like he's on top of or right alongside of this symbol that could be another character or figure of some kind, like the person on top of the shoulders. Again, I don't know. It's hard to tell. There he is right there. My God, it's hard to see. He's right in front of me. But see how this is like a darker finish, like this is older and this looks a little bit newer. Just like this looks newer and this is older, right? The desert varnish there is uh, older on this. This almost looks like a distance marker or something. I'm totally speculating on all of this and what it could mean. But again, here, look, we've got this symbol. It looks like a guy like running again, this wavy line, almost like a Taurus. Upsilon, almost like a bull's horns or something. And then you've got this little guy over here. And then look, slab of petrified wood coming out of the sandstone. That's an actual plank of wood sticking out, almost like an evidence of the mud flood. Okay, you're going to back up a little bit more now. And then we have these stick figures. A lot of people say these are plasma events in the sky, but that doesn't fit the oral traditions of the uh, ancestral Puebloans and uh, the Pueblo, the Hopi people, the Native Americans that tell the oral traditions of what this means. It has to do with their ancestors and their gods, supernatural beings that just live on the outside realm of our dimension and they control nature and reality and they shape everything like gods. Here you've got a lot of uh, lines waving towards what looks like an antelope but could be spears being thrown it looks like they're going right towards the head and the body oh. 
it gets very interesting as we come back here. We've got the spiral pattern. The whole panel gets much more elaborate. And now you see what I was talking about. A boulder that looks like it fell off from up above or came off from right there and fell down. And they carved this whole thing as well. Behind here, this is so fascinating. It looks like there's a box being carried by people, same as a like a goat or an antelope flipped on its side coming out of a wavy line this whole big like ladder or tree symbol and then you've got interesting characters and everything back here so let's take a closer look you've got this spiral glyph here going almost to a figure standing on a line like this is the ground here's the trees here's the antelope and it's almost like this guy's coming in and out of a, a portal or there's energy coming off of him or he's throwing a spear and that's how the spears move through the air flying like that you guys can make up your own mind but notice how see here's a guy throwing a spear into the goat uh, right there almost like he's hunting now we've got these really fascinating energetic lines spirals going up this whole almost like ladder and then here we've got this two-legged figure with the energy coming up like we saw down in the valley a couple of videos back and now look at this what is he carrying that almost looks like i don't know maybe he's not carrying something maybe i'm just like guessing on that but this looks like a box with handles i've had people say that looks like the ark of the covenant or something almost here you've got this swirl symbol here something rubbed out in the middle right isn't that fascinating with the lines coming off like he like here's his little feet this box and then all of this whole scene going up so as we go up this is interesting up here i gotta be careful not to touch anything you've got this line and it looks like one of the animals falling out of it upside down or sideways and we've seen that in other places as well. And then we have this huge like ladder going up. Or maybe it's like a, one of their plants or corn stalk or something like that. One of their crops. Here's another figure. And we see this little symbol a lot too. This line with the double circles right here. See, we got it again right there. Now, look at these guys. Here you've got figure right here again, triangular body with the horns, something smaller. Look at their hands and notice how strange they are. Look at the feet here and his hands are upraised. I've seen this at another canyon with the arms up. Ah, see, there's this really cool looking tree growing right up through the rocks here below this big wolf petroglyph down here is the most fascinating one to me is it looks like a depiction of a whole figure with the head and arm with his hands up like this another arm over here his body goes down and then he has these giant feet like this and look at the toes you've got one two three four five six seven toes one two three four five six why would they do it like that I mean, if they were wearing some kind of ankles, anklets with like ceremonial dress on, but then you have other footprints here and different things. But look at this entire figure. I'll try to get him in the frame. You have, it's very big. Like, I'm not gonna touch it, but he's probably a good two and a half to three feet tall, the way it's carved on the wall here. It'll do like a good scan here so everybody can see it from the feet up and there's some kind of like a block down below and other feet next to it. So like there's one kind of here worn out, one here. Notice the patina on the rock wall is so uh, old. It's all the same. Like when these were carved, it has weathered over since, which would indicate that these were carved, you know, a long, long time ago, maybe even thousands of years ago. You've got this entire figure with these big feet on the bottom. I mean, this is the same kind of depictions that you see everywhere. These look like 
people with elaborate costumes or anthropomorphic figures. They look like non-humanoid type entities. Let me just show you, you gotta see this. I mean, I've seen this in so many other places. Look at this. If this is not, I don't know what it is. That looks like a person, it looks like a person. It looks like they're inside something with feet. It looks like a freaking spaceship with rocket thrusters or something. And then this guy with the antenna and the square head and his buddy like that, that got out. It's like there's two people came on a ship and then here they are. And there's their ship or something, I don't know. What does this mean, you guys? This is so crazy though. I've never seen petroglyphs um, quite like this all together. They're the whole hillside and even up there, just covered like there's another figure here you wrap around and there's just more, more, more. that's a whole figure look the head the arms the body i've seen this near my house this exact one i was calling it i said it looked like a skinwalker i've seen this before but i am not anywhere near the other one that i've seen i mean i am clear out in the middle of nowhere today look at this what and look how many fingers you've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight. Eight fingers, unless this guy's got one, two, three, one, two, three. And then this guy, I don't know what all this, this is up behind him. But here's a dude with his hands up, almost like he's scared or praising. Here's like a dog. See, it's almost like a scene. I've also seen some of these that look like a necklace around an entire figure with a head and horns. And this just looks like a necklace up at McConkie Ranch near Skinwalker Ranch. That's what I see there is that these looks like, like almost like necklaces or chest plates or breastplates on kind of like almost what look like Aztec warriors. And then, yeah, up there, the feet kind of dissipate, but it's like the sense that they're coming through tunnels and stuff. But that's like a whole family with a child. Yeah. Large figures. Those ones are almost six feet life size. Yeah, there's know? a knee there, you know. That you can see the knee, there. the kneecap. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wild. So he's tall. That's yeah. like the life size dude. And then there's even a little down here. Yeah. This one's a circular head compared to the square head. Yeah. Like they almost look like little gingerbread men, like, yeah. hooray! This is like a royal family or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. These real, they look like Aztec royalty or mm -hmm. supernatural beings. Yeah, you've got the feet turned out. He's wearing like a, an apron, the same necklace, holding the weapon or the energy. See, they're always holding on to these yeah. tubes or spears. And then he's got like four earrings and like one, two, three, four, almost like six eyes and weird. And the horns are not like a headdress, but part of the head all the way yeah. down yes. to the jaw. Yes. It's like an extension. Yeah, and right next to him over here is like his weird little buddy. And over here, and severed head, definitely a severed, head. severed head, giant feet here. And then these are like, yeah, brothers, these all guys come from the same clan and wipe the village out, you know? Yeah, and then he's got the big headdress. And then we have the spirals right around among them. And there's the, see how you can really see that, that sun symbol necklace. They all have that, like a tribal, tribal dress. They all belong to the same sun clan or whatever, like you were saying, you know? Yeah, like a machete. Yes. In his hand. Yeah. Dude, I'm just, I'm like a kid right now, man. <laughs> Other than, I can't control my... This is like so critical to your work though. Absolutely. So why though, why? And I've always had to borrow this, uh, photos of this. And now you're here. And now I'm here.
absolutely and you didn't Same even know and we were going to we just kind of stumbled across it because yeah. we noticed driving up the canyon I was, we were like hey there's well, some right there told you about it right yeah randy. yeah randy because i've been to dinosaur national monument i didn't know there was a back way and i have a car i can't get here yeah. swirling vortexes and stuff you've got galaxy patterns almost like toroidal energy fields upside down stuff these are supernatural yeah, entities like and the oh, oral yeah. tradition revolving yeah. around this yeah. is connected to all of that in a big way and here is that triangular box again or that strange one that we saw earlier see the one that almost looked like there was like a tunnel going down to it sometimes even almost with people that look like they're carrying it or going inside of this symbol whatever it is and then also notice how it has this like line coming up out of it and almost like a person down here. It almost looks like a tunnel going down into a chamber. Is this like a, a tomb, an artifact chamber? Or does this mean something else, some other symbology? But it looks like you have these lines coming down and into here with a little figure right there. And here's where it still continues to get very interesting. More of these like wavy energetic lines and sort of a symbol over here. We come up here. I know I'm not getting a lot of explanation because there really isn't one for these. Here we have this motif as well. You have to wonder, is it like a cross section? And now look at this scene and you tell me what you think it means. Here's a guy with horns over here. Like he's holding a big spear or like a staff or something, some kind. And then here's this box again. And then here's this guy, almost like he's like, whoa, hold up. And then here's, right, another guy right here. What were they trying to tell us? This one looks like a little dog, right? A couple little goats or dogs. And then here you have that box. When we come around in front, of the big panel here where this boulder is, it's very interesting as well because you've got almost like a depiction of village life. You've got this spiral symbol and this whole line that goes completely across the front of the rock. These wavy lines that come around like this, I try to keep my shadow off of it as best that I can. But you'll see this pattern that wraps all the way around up here and this one that wraps around here. You've got this almost like a starburst with a little character and more of this wavy pattern. And then as it wraps around, you'll see this whole thing sort of unfold, almost like a depiction of village life. Sorry about my shadow. I don't know how to get that out of the way. It's just where the sun is right now. And now you can see here you've got almost a person and an animal and this whole amazing scene and this almost looks like little huts or something and there you've got this uh, antelope or goat down below and then here we've got these bullseye patterns right here this almost looks like a map right so beautiful Okay, uh, I'm gonna take some photos of it and then I think it would be interesting to get the thermal imager out. All right, I'm getting a lot more wind up here now, um, but we are at the spot with the big boulder that was dropped off. I'm already noticing a real big hot spot right there where everything is fractured. It almost seems like they thought of that as important, the natural cracks and features in the rocks seem to be integrated into the petroglyphs in a way that I didn't really understand. Look at how the heat is like in squares and almost like they're, wow, okay, this is providing some interesting data. I'm going to come down here now and focus. It's a little bit hard to get it all in the shot, but this is the big boulder. It's even hard to see through my vision, but uh, just looking on the viewfinder, but you can see the lines there. This whole boulder is kind of glowing. I'm gonna pan up where the figures are behind. Look how much some of those symbols pop out. Why is it in big, like, square panels? That looks like a door. 
Doesn't that look like a freaking doorway right there? It's like a big glowing wall with a square door. Right where that line is going up. So like there's the guy with the box. And then going straight up from there. It's almost like a like a doorway going in. I'm gonna try to get a better angle here from up higher. This camera is kind of zoomed in tight, so I have to step back away to see. So there's the edge of the cliff. That looks like a door. Oh my goodness. You can see the cracks in the wall right here where the front has fallen off. And then strangely up the wall behind the pillar there is like this big dark doorway looking a rectangular doorway that even when I move my hand across the thermal I don't know if that's just a change in the way the the coloration of the rocks is as I pan around it kind of comes and goes a little bit but see even as I change angles let's see if I can walk up closer I can't scoot back any farther. There's no other room for me to go, but look, when I put it on this particular setting, uh, it's like predator vision or whatever, thermal imaging, you get a huge variation almost that looks like a rectangular doorway almost right, uh, right above this character carrying the box. So I'm just gonna walk up towards it. There's a doorway, it almost looks like a door a big square glowing across it's like glowing across the bottom and then a big rectangular doorway going up whoa okay interesting and then when I back away there it is still it must just be some kind of a the way the, the rock is made and the way it's cap capturing the temperature of the sun, but uh, something to pay attention to. Now everything that is the glowing white color is warm. So let's see if we get anything here. As soon as I start panning the camera over the rock, it starts to try to fight to recalibrate. There, you can kind of see it. It's like a weird glowing spot that the camera struggles. Almost like a weird aura. I almost feel like I need to scoot back even farther. See if I can catch it. Now I've reversed the temperature so it's on uh, black hot. So everything that's a dark color is warm. It's inverted. Let's see if we get the same effect when everything is flipped the other way. Now it just looks like a solid kind of wall and the rock out in front is glowing. So depending on which setting that we have it on reveals a, a few different things. This is one of those places a couple of years ago where I used to just come up here and sit and uh, meditate. And what I did was I would leave uh, the medicine bowl sitting on the rock right there and while I was sitting here I don't know if it was the wind or just the energy of this place but it was like the um, Tibetan singing bowl would start singing on its own just sitting it here so that's part of what got me wondering if there was a weird vibrational energy or something to this story that has to do with Skinwalker Ranch other dimensional portals or them trying to use meditation and consciousness like to manifest things that they wanted to have happen in their in their life like maybe they wanted success on a good hunt they wanted to honor their ancestors or whatever and they understood and believed that stuff that we're just now kind of rediscovering and figuring out today this idea of gateways portals doorways to another dimension is not something that is 
new to these ancient indigenous people, all over the world, there's examples of cultures that were trying to access other windows to another world or go to the afterlife or to communicate with the souls of the dead or even with uh, their gods, supernatural entities or beings from another dimension. And they would come to places like this and do their artwork. And a lot of times they would actually carve doorways into the walls that didn't go anywhere. And the point was you were supposed to use a type of ritual uh, ceremony or a meditation and use your soul and go out of body uh, just like the Egyptians would do in the ancient pyramids and you would do astral projection and out of body travel to actually spiritually go through the doorways and those doorways and portals are actually access points that open up into other places on the planet almost like there's an electromagnetic field around the earth that has wormholes and access points where you can go through one gateway and come out another uh, using remote viewing or meditation going through certain doorways. So it makes me wonder if doing meditations or focusing on doing remote viewing to an area like this would produce some interesting results. If I tried to do astral projection and go through this doorway, where am I gonna come out on the other side? Forget about my abilities as an astral projector, remote viewer, which are very amateur and weak. What about these doorways, if they are a portal or a gateway to another world or dimension, could come out from the other side? Jacques Vallée, John Keel, other professionals, including a lot of remote viewers from Stanford Research Institute, who used to visit a lot of places like Skinwalker Ranch and Mount Wilson Ranch, they were onto something like that, where they were under the impression, just like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that if you played the right combination of colors, sound, or frequential harmonies, frequencies, that you could actually tap into the matrix of reality or communicate with whatever entities or whatever might be on the other side. Whether they like it or not, maybe you can open these doorways or get a glimpse or catch something on camera using these devices like the thermal imager. In fact, over at the Magic Mesa, I'm actively going to be working on an upcoming project where I'm going to be going to the Mesa and filming those strange paranormal lights that appear on the side of the hill in geometric shapes similar to at Skinwalker Ranch. And we have concluded that a lot of that is vehicle headlights from a one road in the distance, but it doesn't seem to explain the orbs that appear down in the valley, the little sh uh, figures and shapes that appear and move towards you, the shadow figures and the strange effects on consciousness that seem to occur down there. So we have some video analysis uh, capabilities now where I can go back and film stuff at the Magic Mesa and be able to tell the difference between vehicle headlights and anything other. Maybe I can even come back here and utilize some of this footage to see if there's any kind of an actual gateway or a dimensional portal here as well. But even as I sit here filming this, look, here's this weird X with an arrow pointing up. So would you say that the X with the arrow pointing up means to go on top? Or should it, does that mean to keep going beyond? And also, doesn't that kind of oddly look like a face with a mouth? Like an eye, nose, mouth, and a chin kind of looking off into the valley. And then the X is like right down there on the chin. Kind of crazy. And then look off in the distance. Here, I'll zoom in again. Maybe we'll get a better view once we get around the corner of this uh, cliffside. This doesn't look as old, but it definitely is chipped in. There's an arrow. This almost, the X almost looks older than the arrow. Maybe not, but interesting. So there's like an X marks the spot. If you keep going this way, maybe up top, but up around the corner there is the pocket cave where I had that like cat growl at me and I've been finding bones and fur and little things like that. So I'm kind of sketched out. Don't go anywhere, Crusher crew. We still have a ton to do. We are barely scratching the surface of this mysterious canyon and how it all connects to the bigger phenomena and paranormal mystery that we're trying to uncover. Where does this X mark the spot lead to? Is there mysterious pyramids buried under a mud flood down in the valley there? And what other petroglyphs 
and pictographs can we find, or maybe even pocket caves or artifacts, then we still have to look for more portals, gateways, and other dimensional doorways if we can with our electronic device, our EMF detector, thermal detector, and more. So make sure and subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll see you guys in the next one.